Wondering what life is really like on Canada's wild and crazy West Coast? This podcast is all about the people, the places, and Vancouver Island time. Together, we'll explore this island paradise, a combination of ocean, city, and country living. We'll meet the fabulous locals such as the Fudge Fairy and the Chicken Lady who have chosen Victoria and Vancouver Island as their home. And we'll learn what makes this place unique and special to those who live here. And now, your host of Vancouver Island Time, Jane Johnston. Hi, everybody. It's Jane Johnston from the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun and host of Vancouver Island Time. I'm here with Janice Long. She's the owner of Cala Design in Oak Bay's Estevan Village. And she's going to be talking to us about her move to Victoria a number of years ago, where she ended up and where she is now. So her transition in the city and uh, what it was like for her. So first of all, where, well, tell us how you ended up in Victoria. After my mother passed away in 2008, I decided it was time for a change. Uh, I'd sort of hung around in town with, you know, my mother, um, not wanting to leave her. And so when she passed away, it was time. I'd always lived my whole life in Vancouver. And Vancouver is close enough to my family that I can still get back to see them. Um, But uh, it, it was time for a change. So moving to Victoria, I think, was one of the best decisions of my life. It is such a friendly place. Within one month of being here, I felt more comfortable than I ever felt my entire life having been raised in Vancouver. Where did you move to in Victoria? I moved to Strawberry Vale. Um, For some locals, they think that that's far out of town. (laughs) Um, But it's It's, it's like 10 minutes. (laughs) It's a it's a long way for people that are born or raised in Victoria. It seems to be out there but when you come from Vancouver it's a hop skip and a jump and you're there in no time so for me it was very local. I always find it funny when I'm showing homes that people say oh you you know you're thinking of living in Langford that's so far out or um, you know Gordon Head that's so far out but they geographically neither is very different from downtown so you didn't stay there though you ended up further in town. From Strawberry Vale, I moved down to Rockland. So Rockland is a wonderful area. It's great for walking. Um, You know, beautiful streets. I was really close to Government House, and to go to walk there is like a slice of heaven. And you act as tourist uh, advisor because there's lots of people on the grounds that are learning about Victoria. I went on a tour of Government House and they asked people to raise their hands, a number of people that thought that they would be moving to Victoria in the near future like 90% of the people put their hands up. So it's obviously a great place to, you know, get your bearings in Victoria. It's uh, also, um, it's it's a ceremonial place. So it's sitting on top of a hill and it overlooks downtown Victoria, beautiful gardens and stuff. Stunning. Stunning gardens. Yeah, the views from there are spectacular. We're lucky to have the opportunity to be able to go into the grounds. So you were renting in the Rockland area and then you transitioned again. What happened there? So with having, you know, put money towards the business from my house that I had originally purchased when I moved here and I was renting after that, the money from some of the money from my house went to opening the store. So from there, I ended up back in the property market, getting back on the ladder and moved to a brand new condo in Colwood. Right. And that's in the Lagoon area off Heatherbell. Yes, it is. Right. Right. I border right on to Royal Roads University. And so that's where they have Hatley Castle. So if anybody's seen the movie X-Men, they have the scene where the helicopter comes in over the castle. So that's that area. We'll we'll show you some pictures. It's really stunning. So what do you like about living in the Colwood area? Part of the drive home is the best part. When you leave Old Island Highway and you come down to the water, you're going through the trees past Fiskard Lighthouse, you come out to the water and it is just breathtaking. You see, you're at the ocean on one side of you, the lagoon on the other, and you see the cruise ships, and it's just a magical, magical place. So it's like suddenly you're on holidays when you're on your way home. It's like, ta-da, we're here. Yeah, it's great. Do you ever go to the uh, Thursday and Friday night? um, um, They have food trucks and stuff on the water? I pass them on the way home. I'm intending one day I'm going to stop. Um, I will. It's on my list for sure. 
Yeah, they have live bands and stuff. It's a, it's pretty good. And they have uh, Greek, they usually have the Greek restaurant. They have ice cream. They have all sorts of choices. They have poutine. So I highly recommend that. Have you seen the art down there? No, I haven't. The big, um, so there's the big dragon. Oh, yes, those. Yes, 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 yes. Those are amazing. The number of people that they draw. That fellow was just killing time, waiting to go back to work in Alberta. And he, he wanted to get out of the house. It was very rainy at that time of year. And he had to do something. And so he created this magical art. And it. I wish that somebody could get him back on TV to interview him to let him know the impact he's had on people that if people have just enjoyed it so much so what about uh royal bay development that's just past you any thoughts about that that's going to be um they have a new development coming up so there's just starting they probably have maybe 200 homes there that are um, developing it's going to be a big uh there's a big recreation area down by the beach have you been down there in the royal bay Beach Park? I haven't been. That's where the gravel pit down that area used to be. I think the people that are going to have the opportunity to live there are going to have amazing views. And they're close to Machosan, so they can go out there and go to the market on Saturdays. Yeah. What about, uh, have you been to the Royal Bay Bakery? <clears throat> no, I have not. I'm gluten-free, so I haven't been there. haven't been there to suss out the donuts I've heard so much about. The apple fritters aren't bad either. I'm never one to turn away from dessert. I just have to be, you know, a little conscious. You know, the weight doesn't come off the way it used to. Um, what about in terms of conveniences? So, like, uh, so living in Colwood, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, I always found even when I lived in Toronto and I moved from area to area, I had to transition from, you know, where to buy my fruits and vegetables and meats and stuff. Where, where are you going to find your stuff? I go to Thrifties. That's my usual stop on the way home. Um, I think, you know, that area is more like box stores. But the great thing is, like, if you're going to go to London Drugs or the post office, it's easy. You just whip into the parking lot and there's parking. It's wonderful. You're not having to sort of drive around and around a few times in order to get parking. Um, and recreationally, what are you doing out there? Um, walking would be good if I was actually going to do it. That would be really good. I mean, I've got it all sussed out as to when I'm going to do it, but I'm still unpacking. I am still unpacking. Um, so I spend too much time doing that instead of enjoying myself. Are you brand new to Colwood? Like how long have you been there? I'm embarrassed to say I moved out there in November, but I'm basically, I'm working or I'm at home unpacking. <laughs> okay. So in terms of, um, the beach do you ever walk along the beach there and what sort of people are you meeting when you're are you interacting with anybody out there before i ever moved there i would i used to walk along the lagoon since i've moved there i have not been walking along the lagoon but at least i drive along it and i see how beautiful it is and i have great intent the people the people in the complex that i've moved into are lovely a lot of them have moved from alberta and other areas in canada so it's a lovely group of people and they are taking advantage of the lagoon and so on so i just i love to see all the birds and everything yeah actually if you're a big bird watcher you can go down during the week and uh you'll see guys with big and women with big cameras taking pictures so um there's a really great facebook group called picture perfect uh, Vancouver Island which uh, they have local artists who have photos that they put up and some of them are from the lagoon oh and there were actually the other morning there were artists out there with their easels and they were painting in the morning as well um, do you go to the Hatley Castle or anything like that have you been there oh my goodness I have got to introduce we have to hang out <laughs> <laughs> I have no life. I have no life. No, I basically, I'm not an exciting person. I work and I go home. That's pretty much it. Well, on Mother's Day, you can go there. They have a painting, um, uh, sorry, an arts uh, sort of festival that goes on along the walkways at Hatley Castle. It's really beautiful. So in music, live music and entertainment and all that stuff. So if you're interested, they also have the Japanese gardens, which are great to walk through. And then they have the old growth forest. Um, the only thing is it's a dog friendly park, so you can walk around with your dogs off leash, but uh, there can be cougars in the area. Just warning you. Okay, good to know. Good to know. And then there's a recreation center there. Mm -hmm. So um, they have um, Jazzercise with a very popular instructor called 
her name's Mandy. So if you ever want to go there, it's really a lot of fun. That's good to know. And then the library. So uh, apparently I was told more than half the books are checked out at any time at the library. But so um, that's just one of the many different things. What about, uh, do you ever go to the downtown Langford area? Uh I go up to Costco and PetSmart and all those areas because it's kind of like, you know, within two blocks, I can do a lot of my shopping. There's the new shopping center that, they're go- that they've just started to work on was a 53,000 square foot thrifties that's going to anchor that mall. That's really going to be something. Oh, the one on Belmont. Yes, yes. So where the old high school was. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about um, um, in terms of restaurants? Do you go out to eat on the West Shore? There's an East Indian restaurant I'm interested in trying, but generally I I don't eat out very much. I'm not exciting. Sorry. <laughs> Turmeric is a great Indian that's restaurant. The one, that's the one. That's the one. I've got their I've got their flyer sitting on my dining room table. And if you like Thai food, Sabai so Thai is right around the corner. It's really good. I like Thai food too. There you go. <laughs> and you can also go Vietnamese right across the street. Okay. Thank you. My travel advisor. <laughs> I find when people move here, they want to know all these sorts of things. So, um, what do you think? Um, what do you think has been holding back the West Shore in terms of development? Um, you know, I think it's if people have to commute. That's that's the issue, and I think that that train needs to be put into um, back to work. I I think just having the traffic and making wider lanes makes no sense. Um, the interchange at McKenzie is costing a boatload of money. I hope it lives up to what everybody's hoping it is. Um, but really, it's, you know, they have to have the development out there so that people are not forced to come into Vancouver, uh, sorry, into Victoria to work. Really, they need to have more out there so that people, you know, they have other options besides box stores. They need, you know, more unique, smaller stores, which is what Victoria is so well known for, some really lovely shops. Well, and also I think people need to live where they're working. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and I agree. I do think my thought is once they put in the interchange, once it's finished, that the prices in the West Shore are going to increase because the commute will be significantly less. I think they also need to put in a bridge between Colwood and Esquimalt. I agree. I agree. And then Esquimalt, the shopkeepers, they're going to have way more traffic make way more money it's it was it's a win-win have um have you always been like in the size of a business this is my first business I just decided I was going to have a store cool we're going to talk about that okay well we've had a bit of an introduction to Victoria and uh we're going to come back and we're going to talk about Cala Design and what Janice what inspired her to open up her own store and what her ideal client is like so who can she reach uh who will enjoy coming into the store it's lovely actually I've taken lots of photos and uh we'll be back in a moment talk to you soon Vancouver Island Time is brought to you by the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun, Victoria, where we bring local expertise and global presence to your property. Hello, and we're back with Janice Long. We're at Cala Design in Oak Bay's Estevan Village. I'm Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group and host with uh, Vancouver Island Time. So uh, what's the story behind this? This, uh, First of all, the, choosing this location and how did you end up starting a design store? What inspired you? Because, uh, you know, the, the life in a, of an entrepreneur is um, basically you give up anything solid and uh, you're working on your own. So it's very challenging. How, how did you come to decide to do this? I think it has more to do with ignorance. I didn't know what I was in for. <laughs> so. I'm just like I I get an idea and I just act on it I'm not a person that spends a lot of time talking about what I'm going to do I'm an action person so um, when I decided I was going to do this I decided okay I've you know been an interior designer for years decades and decades and I've worked for other design places in the city and I sort of decided okay what am I going to do you know it was before the big flush of people started moving here. So there wasn't, you know, there's a lot of designers in not a very, you know, large city. And I thought, am I going to have to go back to Vancouver? And I thought, 
No, I would like to bring some of what Vancouver offers to here. Because one of the things about living in Vancouver is you've got choices. And there's lots of people moving here that are, you know, traveled the world and are used to having a lot more to choose from than what Victoria has. So when I decided I was going to open the store, I thought, you know, Having another design, just a, des a place that does design, that's an office. How do I get people in the door? People will say, we don't need design services and you know, they would continue to walk. So to give people an idea of, you know, options and opportunities and just to chance to have a conversation without feeling like, oh, we have to pay and we can't talk to anybody. Um, so they come into the store and you never know who knows somebody that might be doing this or moving here. I mean, I don't care if someone buys a bar of soap. Honestly, I just really love customer service. I love making people feel welcome. And the fact that I basically get to buy things that I like for the store is a win-win. Well, you're obviously a good shopper because you have beautiful items here. We're going to take a tour and see them in a minute. But what inspired you to open up your store in Estevan Village? Because this is not a big area. No, it's not. I actually went against my business mentor's advice. He wanted me to be downtown. And I'm like, no, I don't want to be downtown. I don't want people to sort of figure, you know, be watching the meter and have feeling like they've got, you know, just a small amount of time. And of course, parking is becoming more and more an issue to be downtown. And I wanted it to be a more relaxed atmosphere. Um, I stood actually at Fairfield Plaza and I watched because there was a space open and I watched and it was like ants, people rushing in, rushing out. I thought that's not the feeling that I want to have. So I looked at different areas and really, you know, people with a relaxed attitude, that's the feeling of the store. And so I ended up at Estevan Village and it's been a wonderful uh, location. People admire the location that I'm in. Uh, it is a relaxed atmosphere and it's been working so far. It's a destination store. I mean, it's worth the trip to come here, certainly for Esteban Village anyway, because there's so many things to do just in this one block. I gained 15 pounds the first year I was open because there's five restaurants in this block. So um, there's lots of things to do just in one block and there's free parking. So the store has been a really uh, good asset to what the village already offers. So... Uh... Are your clientele from Oak Bay or are they from all over? They're, they're from all over. I mean, we'll, we will travel to Vancouver for jobs. We will go up island. We're not specific. We just happen to be in Oak Bay, which is, you know, a lot of our target market is here. But we are flexible in terms of where we go. And if someone wants to pay for us to fly somewhere to work for them, we are happy to do that. Well, I know some people in Jamaica. There you go. I'm. We're in. I'm just kidding. Okay, so uh, how do you pick what goes into your store? Because there's what I'm hearing is there are two sides to your store. So the one is a retail side, the other is your service, your design service. So how do you pick what comes in the store? I'm just looking around here. So you have beautiful art, and then you know down to I saw some. I think there were perfumes and soaps and stuff like that, and so it's very eclectic mixture. Mm -hmm. So the store is. Part of it is interior design. So we offer all design services and any spa any aspect thereof. So it could be like a one hour consultation or a color consultation, or we do complete renovations, uh, draperies, blinds, flooring, all of that we do. Uh, as far as the store goes, it's furniture, home accessories, giftware, things to pamper yourself. We've got five different artists, all original local art. Uh, no one showing at a gallery specifically. So it gives the artists an opportunity. It makes a big difference in the appeal of the store. And now we're on people's routes when they're looking for art that, you know, we're one of the stops that they make because we routinely sh uh, change out the art. Yes, and I see different themes here. So, um, you know, very bright, colorful and kind of whimsical and then um, some uh, scenes of boats and stuff like that. Uh, and I see you have an employee, so she's a designer? Yes, Sue Pipes is an interior designer. She's got decades of experience also. Uh, lots of people will know of Sue because she's lived here for, for longer than I have. Um, she is wonderful, loves renovations. It's her favorite thing to do. Uh, we go to, you know, different uh, 
design shows to you know look for merchandise I try and get lines that are exclusive to me so no one else has them in Victoria or even on the island uh, a new line that we've just had come in I'm one of two in Canada that carries it so when you're looking for a gift it's a great place to stop at and furniture I've got the exclusive for the island on Whittington and Company furniture beautiful quality uh, they'll do all kinds of custom options it's really you know if you've been looking and don't want what everybody else has this is the place to come Okay, so let's do a tour and see what you have. And you can uh, tell us uh, what we're looking at as we go along. Okay. okay. So this is what we refer to as our purple room. Purple is Cala's signature color. People tend to stand at this doorway here and look at the room and go, oh, so this is what you can do with a small space. We've had all different types of room settings in here. The size hasn't changed, but people really love what we're able to do with a small space. You don't have to have fewer pieces of furniture because it's a small space. You definitely have options, and if you are not able to come up with them, we certainly will be able to. Tell me about this, this furniture right here. So this, is, this chair is from Whittington & Company. It's available in, we can do custom sizing. You see the nail head trim around the arms. That can be with or with the nail head trim or without all different colors and finishes. The stain on the legs can be any of Benjamin Moore's colors and different stains as well. This is actually the matching sofa done in a different fabric. Uh, it is it comes in three different lengths as well as customization is available. You see with the small arms you're able to get more people seated in a small space rather than the big fat arms that we had years ago. This art, this, these two pieces here are done by Arden Rose. She's uh, our newest artist to have. She does great color. Her pieces are really beautiful and they're attracting a lot of attention. This is just one small section of the fabrics that we have available for our interior design. We have wall coverings, we do bed coverings. We've got the towels there from Abyss. They just give you an incredible array of colors to choose from. The design area is packed as we have lots going on. We've got uh, Sue there working hard. Um, over here we've got some flooring samples, more fabrics, more wallpaper. Airy rugs, we've got those as well. Something for everyone, we can find it. We've got no shortage, we've got at least double the number of samples at the back as well and I've got more behind me. So this sofa is from Bernhardt. Bernhardt is a fourth generation American company. The legs on this particular piece are actually stainless steel. They come with all sorts of fabrics and if you don't care for any of their standard fabrics we certainly can use any of our other standard upholstery fabrics to be able to order it for you and customize. The lacquered piece that's over there with the silver is also a Bernhardt piece. They do beautiful case goods which would be uh, an entertainment center or a console table for a hall uh, that kind of thing. Those pieces, they have factories all over the world that specialize in, in those kinds of specialized metal treatments. This table here is reclaimed wood, uh, so this is giving you a much more rustic feel, but I like the mix of the eclectic of traditional with um, the aged wood. The base is steel. Uh, it has a brush finish to it, uh, pewterized, so it's giving you you know, a more casual look, for, and you could have that in a refined space or casual. It could be a kitchen. It could be used as a study table. Lots of options for that one. This lounge is also from Bernhardt. This is a piece that you could have different stains for the legs. You can have it with or without the nail head trim on the base. Lots of fabric choices. Uh, it really is a uh, great piece to have whether you've got a closet that's big enough it would be a great piece for a large walk-in closet or in a master bedroom or in your living room the art behind it is another piece by Arden Rose great colors and then the uh, bath salts and diffusers that we have on the stand there is Agraria out of San Francisco this is more Agraria here these are all diffusers different fragrances Agraria was started by a pair of interior designers in the 1990s. This, the CEO is actually from Saskatchewan. Pewter out of northern Italy. The pieces are handmade. The president of the company does all of the designing. It's a family-owned company. They 
have a wonderful warranty on their stemware so that if you break any of the glasses, we send back the stem and they will replace it, which is wonderful. Uh, the pewter does not tarnish the way silver does. It just sort of gets an aged patina, but stays as it is. The line is huge. There's dinnerware, flatware, serving pieces. It's just an amazing line and it's a very small company. I'm the only one on the island that carries it and it is just a great opportunity to, again to have something different. It's a great line to you know to collect whether you're starting out as a wedding registry. We can do that for you here. Any kind of gift registry. Um, it gives you an opportunity to not have to think every year as to what I'm going to get that person. This is the way to start, you know, starting a, um, a history. Tell me about the slippers here. These slippers are to die for. They are the best gift, whether it's for a baby shower or whether it's to pamper yourself or your friends. They have suede on the bottom and then the tops are silk. These are uh, designed by a mother and daughter from Northern California. Anytime that someone has purchased them as a shower gift, they've come back raving about the response that they got. I have one customer that has three pairs. She loves them so much. So thank you so much for taking the time to be interviewed today by Vancouver Island Time. I'm, what I've realized is this is really a lifestyle store. It really is. This is not a store of need. This is a store of want. So if you're looking to design your house, contact Cala Design in Oak Bay's Estevan Village and how do they get in touch with you? They can call us at 778-265-8002 or they can certainly email us at info at cala.design. That's it. That's the URL. There's no .com or .ca. It's just cala.design. Okay. Thank you so much and welcome to the neighborhood of Colwood and Rockland and the village of Estevan. Thank you. Welcome to the neighborhood. We hope you have had some insight into West Coast living. If you know of someone or some place that should be highlighted in our podcast, we love to hear from you. Please go to VancouverIslandTime.com and click on our connect button. See you next week on Vancouver Island Time with Jane Johnston. Do you feel like you're drowning in administrivia? Do you have a podcast you would like transcribed to repurpose as a blog or even a best-selling book? Rhonda's virtual office is the answer to the freedom you crave so you can get busy doing what you love. Let Rhonda's virtual office give you the relief you need. Visit rondasvirtualoffice.com and get some peace of mind today. Rhonda's virtual office is the go-to transcription service for EWN Podcast Network.